He offers a resting place for me in his luxurious love. His tracks take me to an oasis of peace, the quiet brook of bliss. That's where he restores and revives my life. He opens before me pathways to God's pleasure and leads me along in his footsteps of righteousness so that I can bring honor to his name. Lord, even when your path takes me through the valley of deepest darkness, fear will never conquer me, for you already have. You remain close to me and lead me through it all the way. Your authority is my strength and my peace. The comfort of your love takes away my fear. I will never be lonely, for you are near. You become my delicious feast. Even when my enemies dare to fight, you anoint me with your fragrance of the Holy Spirit. You give me all I can drink of, you, until my heart overflows. So why would I fear the future? For your goodness and love pursue me all the days of my life. Then afterward, when my life is through, I'll return to your glorious presence and be forever with you. Lord is my best friend, my shepherd. I always have more than enough. He offers a resting place for me in his luxurious love. His tracks take me to an oasis of peace, the quiet brook of bliss. That's where he restores and revives my life. He opens before me pathways to God's pleasure and leads me along in his footsteps of righteousness so that I can bring honor to his name. Lord, even when your path takes me through the valley of deepest darkness, fear will never conquer me, for you already have. You remain close to me and lead me through it all the way. Your authority is my strength and my peace. The comfort of your love takes away my fear. I will never be lonely, for you are near. You become my delicious feast. Even when my enemies dare to fight, you anoint me with your fragrance of the Holy Spirit. You give me all I can drink of, you, until my heart overflows. So why would I fear the future? For your goodness and love pursue me all the days of my life. Then afterward, when my life... And if you're watching uh, us online, we just thank you for being engaged. And Lord, we just thank you for a great and wonderful evening in your presence, in your glory, as you fill us with your word and your power. And Lord, we give you all the praise. We magnify your name in this place, Lord. We want you to be glorified as you do what only you can do in us, through us, and to us. Lord, we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship the Lord together. Saturday was silent, surely it was true. Since when has it possible ever stopped you? Friday sits the point, but Sunday's empty too. Since when has it possible ever stopped you?
seated, but be, stay engaged. Amen. Hallelujah. God is a good, good God. How many have a need? Any kind of need? The Lord says that he meets need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So he uses his resources, his power to meet your need. Amen? So if you came here with a need tonight, prepare to have it met. Amen? Hallelujah. Well, you know, we got a... Uh, Women's Conference coming up in April. 
and it's what, 16 to the 18th? And we've, we're getting calls from Buffalo, New York, Washington, D.C. They're going to converge right here in Palmyra, Pennsylvania. Amen? God's going to touch the nation. And uh, so, ladies, if you haven't registered, registration is free. And uh, we're receiving donations of any donation that you'd like to give. Uh, glory to God. So be sure to get involved with that. And then uh, on uh, Saturday, March 27th, we're having our egg hunt at 11 a.m. And uh, if you have kids that are ages 2 to 10, uh, bring them here. It's just a fun time. They get taught a lesson, and then they get to gather some uh, eggs, and it's a great day. So uh, you can mark that on your calendar. And, of course, tonight, uh, you can give those that are here anytime to the seed planter. If you're watching online, you can give through our website, and uh, that's available to you. Amen. And if you need any other announcements, you can look on our website. <laughs> Amen. You know, what a joy and a privilege it is to um, be able to flow, to move, to feel, and to respond to God's Holy Spirit. And, uh, you know, God gave us a book on how to do that, and it's the book of Acts. Jesus had left the earth. And he had a group of 12, a group of 70, and it got to about 120. And they saw him ascend into heaven. Right? He took the greatest elevator ride that there ever was. And uh, I want to just touch on some things from the book of Acts, and how we can respond. You know, the Holy Spirit, He is here to help us, but He doesn't do it for us. He will give us an opportunity, but we have to respond to Him. Amen? So if you have your Bibles tonight, let's go to the book of Acts. You know, these Wednesday nights are different. I talk less and let the Holy Spirit do more. Amen? And uh, how, how many are ready to break through tonight? You're ready to break through, break out, break loose. Amen? Get free. Get full. Right? You know, we didn't just come here to have a, a stale touch of some crusty bread. You know, we came here to have a touch from the master. Because he's got to saturate some things in us. And uh, in Acts chapter 1, starting with verse 12. And uh, they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. When they had entered, they went into the upper room, notice where they were staying. You think about it, what kind of room can hold 120 people? Hmm? A room like this. Amen? So, this was their hub in Jerusalem. And, uh, Peter, James, John, Andrew, Philip, and Thomas were there. Bartholomew, Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, Judas, the son of James. These all continue with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. Notice his brothers. They kind of came on at the end. They didn't really believe in him while he was walking the earth. You know, I mean it. You wouldn't believe me either when, when your mom would say, I wish you'd be more like Jesus. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Mary didn't do that. So what did they do? They continued with what? One accord. They were in unity, in harmony, and in agreement. And they continued in prayer. And so everybody said they did. Okay? So they were 
were praying, they were unified. Why did they get there? Because Jesus said, go to Jerusalem and wait. But they had the Lord's command. They had the word of God to be where they were. Did they know what was going to happen? No, they only knew that God was going to send the promise, but they didn't know how that was going to be. Like, you didn't know what God was going to do tonight, neither did I. I just showed up. Because I know that he told me to be here. Amen? He told me over 19 years ago, and I haven't left yet. Not planning on leaving either. Okay? So... They were assembled together because he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise. He said, "You, which you have heard from me. So this was a reminder. How many know it's good to be reminded of what God said? Even the Holy Ghost still bring things to your remembrance, what the Father tells you. Okay? And then he said, John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from now. Okay? Alright? So, here they were. They were in the place where God said to be. And they weren't just sitting around lounging. They were praying. They were in supplication. They were in worship. Amen? Alright, let's go to Acts 2. So, they're in this atmosphere. How many know God moves in atmospheres? You want God to move in your home? Create an atmosphere that he likes to move in. What kind of atmosphere does God move in? One where there's unity, one where there's peace, one where there's worship, one where there's praise, one where there's joy. Amen? Did you know if you don't like the atmosphere, you can change it. And the atmosphere will change simply by inviting someone new into the atmosphere. We do that through our prayer, through our praise, through our worship. We invite God. And what happens? Where does God inhabit? The praises of who? His people. See, so praise, and prayer is a part of praise. It creates an atmosphere. And they're in this room. All right? Suddenly, there came a sound from where? Heaven. It was like a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the house. What filled the house? The sound. A sound that was so powerful, so incredible, that people in the town heard it. A sound filled the house. A sound from heaven. It wasn't just any sound. It was a sound from heaven. It was a sound that was never heard before. Why? This was the first time for this group. I mean, God did other things in other places, but this was the first time, right? When, when Moses went on the mountain, wasn't there some sounds? Thunder and lightning, right? People thought God, when he God spoke it, some thought it was thunder, some heard a voice. It all depends on how close you are to God and what you hear. Amen? So, and it, when the sound came, they were sitting. Oh, they didn't even have to stand. You know, when, when someone serves you dinner, you're sitting usually. Right? Verse 3, then there appeared to them divided tongues of fire. That means a flame on each of them. Right? It was the same fire that led them through the wilderness, their forefathers. They're relatives. They're distant. Right? And it sat on each of them. Not one was left out. Verse 4. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Let me say they. How did they respond to their filling? They began to speak. Listen. If the Holy Spirit gives you words, he's not going to move your mouth. You're not. Say, I'm not a puppet. Don't you hate those questions when you're when you're on a website and say, I'm not a robot. How many bikes are in this picture? I'm not a robot. Well, God's not going to move your mouth, but he will give you words to say, and you've got to say them. Well, I don't know what I'm saying. It doesn't matter. He didn't ask you if you know it. He just asked you to say it. 
Okay? They were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak how? In different languages. As the Spirit gave them utterance. Okay? So the sound filled their house. Fire of tongues appeared on each of them. This word utterance, he gave you utterance, means he gave you the ability to speak out, to speak forth, to pronounce. Amen? And uh, so this is what happened. And you can see how they're responding. The, the Holy Spirit began to move. First of all, there was a sound. Secondly, filled the house. Thirdly, came on each of them. Fourthly, touched them. And then they began to speak. A simple response. Say a simple response. They began to speak. That's all. Do you have faith to speak? All right. And uh, so, I have other translations, but I can't go into those right now. All right, so as a result of this, um, I'm pulling uh, stuff here, okay? Look at verse 5. Now, this is going on in the house of believers, okay? Now, there were Jews living in Jerusalem, devout and God-fearing, men from every nation under heaven. You know why they were there? It was the Feast of Pentecost. That's a week-long feast, all right? So, everybody was in Jerusalem celebrating the, the Feast of Harvest or the Feast of Pentecost. This is, when, this is the day that God chose to do this. Okay? No, notice verse 6. And when this sound was heard, my goodness, if you think it was loud in the house, they heard it outside. They heard it in the city. They heard something going on. There was, the house was probably not too far from the center of the city. And people in Jerusalem heard it. They heard the sound. They heard the commotion. All right? Then the crowd gathered. You know, God likes to do things to gather a crowd. Why? He's not afraid to display his goodness and his power. He wants to make the greatest impact on a place. A crowd gathered, and they were bewildered. Because each one was hearing those in the upper room speaking in his own language. Now, they hadn't gone in the house yet. But yet they were hearing these Galileans who had a particular dialect speaking in other dialects that they didn't learn, that they didn't study, and they were declaring the works of God. A supernatural phenomenon. Say supernatural. Phenomenon. Can God enable a person to speak a language they never learned or studied? Absolutely, yes. See, and there's a significance to every believer in doing this. Another message. You just got to trust me. There's a significant uh, importance of speaking in tongues. And I would encourage every believer to do it. And if you don't do it, you can do it. It's a gift. Remember say it's a gift. Okay? So they were astonished at these who were Galileans. Right? And they were astonished at what they were hearing them say. Okay? All right, now let's go to verse 14. Go down to verse 14. So, here's what God did. He filled his people. He touched his people in such a way that was demonstrative. In other words, it caused another larger group to gather outside of this place. So, Peter stood up. How many know Peter was just filled with the Holy Ghost? How did he know to stand up? The Holy Spirit probably said, Peter, stand up. You got something to say? I do. All right? So Peter preached, proclaimed, explained, and exhorted the people. 
See, he was responding to the moving of the Holy Spirit. Right? And uh, the crowd was confused and bewildered, and they needed someone to straighten out their thoughts. Okay? And they were, you know, they heard these, these Jews speaking of redemption, of atonement, of justification, of salvation, of Jesus being the Messiah. You know, a lot of people didn't believe that Jesus was the Messiah, even though he died and rose again. But some mocked. So here's what's going to happen. When the word of God is preached and when the Holy Spirit moves, you're going to get four reactions because there's four types of hearts. You're either going to be amazed, perplexed, you're going to inquire, you want to know more, or you're going to mock. Mocking is the soil that is the seed that never gets in the soil. So, Peter responded, he stood up, he raised his voice, and he said to them, he said, let this be known to you, heed my words. He, the people who were mocking said that they're drunk. How many have ever seen someone who was drunk? Been there, done that, got the t-shirt, didn't want it. All right? People are drunk because of the slur speech, the way we walk, right? And because they do stupid things. Okay? So some were looking and hearing, they were seeing this, and they were saying these are drunk. And Peter said, no, they're not drunk as you suppose because it's only 9 a.m. Because basically, people didn't get drunk until nighttime. <laughs> and besides, this was a holy festival, and this was a time of prayer. They, they weren't going to be getting drunk. Even drunk people didn't get drunk at this time. But there was something going on that caused the people looking on it to say, these people are drunk. Peter didn't deny that they were drunk. He didn't, he, but he, he said, they're not drunk like you think. All right? And so Peter preached the message. His text was Joel 2. This is that, which was spoken by the prophet. Everybody say, this is that. Cool. Anybody want some of that? You can have some of that. Right? Even the cat and hat can have some of that. So... Um, and then Peter preached, and he told them that Jesus was a man attested by God to miracles. Verse 22. Miracles and signs which God did through him in your midst. I'm going to say in your midst. Some of these people might have seen the miracles that Jesus did. Okay? And then Peter preached about Jesus' resurrection. He used scripture and words of David. He called David a prophet. He, he quoted Psalms uh, 16, verses 8 to 11, which David wrote. All right? And look at verse 33. Therefore, being exalted to the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he poured out this which you now see and hear. I'm going to say, see and hear. Miracles that God does are meant to be seen and heard. There's a display and a sound. A display and a sound. God doesn't do silent movies. God's movies are animated with sound. There's action and sound. Okay? Okay? So Jesus is the baptizer, and when the people are baptized, the results are seen and heard. Okay? Then verse 38. 
Peter said to them, repent. You know, sometimes you're not receiving from God because we need to change something in our life. First message of John the Baptist, repent. First message of Jesus, repent. First message of Peter, repent. What does it mean? It just simply means to change. All right, without going into a long exhortation of it, repentance means to change. Okay? You make a mistake, you change. You mess up, you change. If you've got a wrong attitude, you change. God gives us an opportunity to change. Why? That attitude or that thing is blocking him from doing what he wants to do. Look at your neighbor and say, come clean. Repent, every one of you, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the, the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Now, he is giving them a challenge, and they have to respond. God's not going to make you repent, but he'll give you an opportunity to repent. Okay? Verse 39, for the promise, that's the Holy Spirit, is to, to you and to your children and to all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call. The, speak, the people's response to God's call is repent, be baptized, receive God's gift, because it's available to all. What does it mean to be baptized? It means to be immersed. So, if you're baptized in water, you're immersed in water. If you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, you're immersed in spirit. You get baptized in fire. You get baptized in power. Oh, my goodness. We need to be immersed in power. And guess what? If you've been immersed once, you can be immersed again. People who got filled here got filled in other places. There is a refilling. Amen? Why? Sometimes people come in here, they run it on empty. They didn't make it to the station, and it's on E, but this is a filling station. Amen? You don't need a car to get gas. You don't need uh, cash to get gas. All you need is faith. Amen? And your tank can be full to overflowing. Amen? So the people had to respond. And they did. They repented. Right? 3,000 people. Now think about this. How long did it take to baptize 3,000 people? Do you dunk them once? Do you dunk them twice? Or do you hold them under until they really repent? But think about it. 120 people are baptizing 3,000. Because Peter said, be baptized, so all of them got baptized. That's a lot of baptism. 3,000 people. And then Peter said in verse 40, he said, he testified and exhorted. He, he continued to preach a little bit more. He said, be saved from this perverse generation. You know what? We're living in a perverse generation. Where people are confused of their gender. Just check. Check what you've been born with. That's what you are. Amen? And just accept what you are. Be the best person that you can be. Don't try to be someone else. You'll be second best. That's enough said about that. So, but you know what? Jesus is the way out of a perverse generation. Then he said, those who gladly receive. Let me say, gladly received. How many glad receivers do we have here tonight? They gladly received his word and were baptized. 3,000 dunk. They, they went to Duncan, Duncan Holy. Not Duncan Donuts, Duncan Holy. 3,000. I like 3,000 baptism, please. Now, look at verse 42. These 3,000 then just didn't go home. They continued. Everybody say continued. What is that? That's a response. It's a response for getting their lives changed, for getting saved, for getting connected to heaven. 
They continued steadfastly in doctrine, fellowship, communion, and prayers. They didn't just sit around going kumbaya. They were actively engaged, actively involved in what they had just received, because what they just received was new to them. This was not Judaism. This was Christianity. This was the birth of something brand new. Out of this is where the church came from. They didn't have any churches here. There were synagogues. Then fear came upon every soul, verse 43. And many signs and wonders were done through the apostles. Everybody say many. God's got enough signs and wonders to do, amen? Oh, I hope God's got enough for me. He does. He's got more than enough. He's El Shaddai, not El Tipo. Amen? Now notice this. Verse 44. Now all who believed were together. 3,000 house guests were together and uh, they had all things in common. They shared things. You need some shoes? I got some shoes. You need a coat? I got a coat. You need a car? I got a car. They lost. They did not say that the things, they did not say mine. Because all of a sudden now, 3,000 people were putting others first. Okay? As anyone had need. And oh, they sold their possessions and goods. I don't have anything to give. Well, they sell something. It's possessions. Goods. Right? So there was giving. And they were praising God. Everybody say praising. They kept praising Him. They had, they had favor with God and all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. So this is their response. This is how they responded to when the Holy Ghost moved. Amen? And uh, they were glad, grateful, and humble. And they were full of praise. And that's what gave them the favor with all the people. Amen? Now, how about you? How are you going to respond to when the Holy Spirit moves? Are you available for him to move on you? Or do you restrict him in how he can move? You can do this, but not that. Listen, who are you to dictate to him anyway? Just let God move how he wants to move. What will people think? That's the problem. You're worrying about what people think. You're not worrying about what he thinks. Amen? I'm going to pray for these that are watching. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I give you thanks and praise, Father, that those heard that, who heard this message, Lord, they're responding to your call. They're responding to your challenge. Lord, they're changing. They're receiving Lord, and they're getting engaged in your kingdom and in your work and in your business. Father, and I pray that you bless those who are watching this and will watch this in the name of Jesus. And I give you thanks and praise that the power of the Holy Spirit goes through these airwaves and touches their heart right where they are because there's no distance in the Spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen. Not only did these 3,000 people, they got born again. They got baptized, and they got filled with the Holy Ghost all at the same time. Kind of like me when I got saved. I got saved and filled with the Holy Ghost pretty much at the same time. Amen? So tonight we have an opportunity to respond because we know that he's here. Because number one, where two or three are gathered in my name, he said, there am I in the midst. Number two, the word went forth. Acts 1, Acts 2, different things. The word went forth. Amen? So he confirms his word with signs following. Amen? And uh, so if you're here tonight and you have a need that God needs to meet, God is a meter of that need. 
Amen? He will meet that need with his word, with his power, and with his glory. Amen? Healing in your body. If you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit, and every believer needs it, it's not something... People have confused tongues so much, the public office and the private use. As a believer in Christ Jesus, everyone who's filled with the Holy Spirit speak in tongues because tongues edifies you. Tongues build you up. Tongues is a direct line. It's, it's, it's the God phone. It's a direct line of communication to Father God. The enemy cannot understand it. He can't break the code because he lost his anointing. But every believer needs to be filled. You don't have to be a certain age. You, your children, and all those who are far off. You can be an adult, you can be a child, but you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen? It'll transform your life. But God, God wants to heal your body. He wants to help your family. He wants to heal your marriage. He wants to do great and mighty things. There's no limit to what he can do. So if you have a need tonight, I want you to come up right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. We got a need meter. Amen. He's a devil eater and a need meter. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You came here tonight, and you're not going to leave disappointed. Because the Lord loves you. And he's able to do, he's able to keep that which you commit into his hands right now. give you thanks and praise right now for your miracle wonder working power on this lady in the name of Jesus Father Karen Lord you brought her here tonight and she is not going to be disappointed Lord, because she's going to receive healing and health to her body now in the name of Jesus sickness I told you I command you to go and I release health and life the life of God
there's people that doesn't believe he exists, he goes, ha, 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 ha. Hallelujah. He rejoices over you with joy. Oh, you're, you're about to get some new strength. The joy, the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy, the joy. Ha, 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 ha. Seatbelts on. Psalm 126. Six verses. Some of you have been brought back from captivity. Yes. When the Lord brought back the captives of Zion, we were like them who dreamed. It seemed so unreal. Don't contain what he's put inside of you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Go with the blessing. 